Hello dreamers and welcome to The Sleepy Scholar, the podcast that helps you learn in your dreams. I'm Debbie, your guide on tonight's journey to the mystical lands of ancient Ireland, where we will learn about the festival of Lunasa and the Talton Games. Before we embark on tonight's journey, I'd like to invite you to subscribe and join our community on YouTube, Facebook, TikTok and all your favourite podcast platforms. Your support not only means the world to me, but also helps preserve and share these enchanting stories and cherished traditions. Tonight, we will explore the legend of Taltu's offering and the origins of the Lunasa celebration. As you listen, let your imagination wander through the verdant landscapes and ancient customs that have shaped this captivating tale. But first... Let's prepare ourselves for a journey into tranquility. Find a comfortable position. Close your eyes. And take a deep breath in. Filling your lungs with fresh air. As you exhale, let go of any lingering tension. Now imagine yourself in ancient Ireland, standing on the rolling plains of Teltown. The cool, refreshing air carries the soft sounds of the nighttime landscape. Breathe in deeply, filling your lungs with the rich, earthy aroma of the fertile land. With each exhale, feel that tension melt away, leaving you relaxed and at peace. Feel the gentle breeze caressing your skin and the soft, cool grass under your feet. The distant murmur of a flowing stream mingles with the soft rustling of leaves, creating a natural melody that adds to the beauty of the place. As you walk through the fields, you come across the ceremonial fire, its embers glowing warmly. You find a comfortable spot near the fire, feeling the warmth on your skin, and lie down on the soft grass. Above you is spread a canvas of soft twilight hues, with stars beginning to twinkle like tiny beacons of light. You are grateful for this moment of stillness, as you leave behind any burdens of the day. With each breath, sink deeper into relaxation. 
ready to listen to our story of Taltu's contribution and the first Lunasa Games. Fado, Fado, in ancient Ireland, where myths and legends intertwined with everyday life, lived Taltu, a woman of immense power and wisdom. She was the foster mother of Lu, the great warrior and hero of the Thuha de Danann. Taltu's name was known far and wide, not just for her noble lineage, but for her unwavering commitment to the land and her people. Taltu was a queen of the Fir Bullock and married to Ochad Makerk, their final king in Ireland. But when Ochid died in battle, her life changed in an instant. She was alone and abandoned in the world until one day she came under the care of the Thuha de Danum. They took her under their wing entrusting her with the care of young Lu, who had been sent to her for protection and guidance during a time of turmoil. She raised him as her own, teaching him the importance of power, wisdom and compassion in a world filled with chaos and war. And as Lu grew into the great leader and warrior, Taltu's love and guidance never wavered. Despite the challenges, Taltu's heart was filled with love for the land and its people. Her bond with Lu was particularly strong. They often walked together through the forests, discussing the future of the land and the dreams they held for its prosperity. Taltu's gentle wisdom and Lu's vibrant energy complemented each other perfectly. Taltu saw the potential for prosperity in the wild, untamed lands of Ireland. The land was dense with ancient forests, filled with towering trees that had stood for centuries their canopies thick with leaves that blocked out the sun. The forest floor was a tangle of undergrowth, with thick brambles and dense thickets that made passage nearly impossible. The land was wild and beautiful, but it was also untamed and unyielding, making it difficult to farm the land. Taltu envisioned vast fields of grain, lush pastures for cattle, and gardens overflowing with fruits and vegetables. This vision drove her to undertake the monumental task of clearing the land. Each day began with the sounds of axes 
and saws biting into the trunks of ancient trees. The forest slowly giving way to open space. The work was grueling and the progress was slow. But Taltu's perseverance never wavered. She worked longer hours than anyone else. Her hands blistered and her muscles aching. Yet she continued to push forward. The transformation of the landscape was nothing short of miraculous. Where once stood towering trees and tangled thickets, now lay vast expanses of rich arable land. The newly cleared fields were dark and fertile, ready to be planted with crops that would sustain the community. As the last of the trees were felled, and the land lay ready for planting. Taltu's power finally gave out. Bent over from exertion, her knees failed her, sending her tumbling onto the fertile plains she had labored so fiercely to create. Sweat poured down her face glistening in the evening sun. As her breaths came in ragged gasps, a profound sense of fulfillment washed over her. In her dying breath, in her dying breath, Tatu made a request to her foster son. Lou. She asked that the land she had cleared be remembered and celebrated each year. Lou, deeply moved by her offering and dedication, vowed to commemorate her wish. Thus, the festival of Lunasa was born. A time to celebrate the harvest and remember the great contribution of Taltu. The people gathered from far and wide to participate in the festivities. They revered Taltu's memory with athletics contests, music and dancing. Every inch of the land was now bursting with life. A bountiful feast for all who called at home. The sun shone down upon the fields, kissing them with its golden rays and breathing new life into the earth. This was a Lunasa. A time to celebrate the harvest. No grievances would be aired at this sacred time and grudges would be set aside in recognition of Taltu, the mother of the land. That first Lunasa, the air buzzed with excitement and anticipation. Men, women and children adorned in their finest attire filled the grounds. Men wore lena, tunics made of wool or linen, paired with broths, large cloaks fastened with brooches. Women donned long dresses adorned with intricate embroidery, each stitch showcasing their skill and pride. Kian 
a young warrior with dreams of paying tribute to Tatu's legacy, wandered among the crowd, wide-eyed with wonder. He paused in a clearing where a young warrior demonstrated his hurling skills to the admiration of young and old alike. As he watched, he envisioned himself competing in the games, feeling a surge of excitement at the thought of making his family proud. One evening, as he practiced his spear throwing in a field near his home, his father approached him. Not half bad for a gossor, his father said a proud smile on his face. You're cut out for these games, Cian. I feel it in my bones. As Cian made his way to the games, he marvelled at the vibrant scene before him. The fields were alive with activity and the sounds of music and laughter filled the air. Kean felt a mix of excitement and nerves, but he was determined to give his best in recognition of Taltu and the spirit of Lunasa. The first Lunasa festival was upon them, and the opening ceremony was a sacred and grand affair. Lu, with his golden hair and imposing figure, stood with a regal stance at the front of the crowd. He held a golden spear in his hand the symbol of his power and bravery. His presence was like a bolt of lightning, electrifying the atmosphere and commanding the attention of all. A hush fell over the crowd. Their eyes filled with awe and admiration for this great deity before them. Lu began by recounting the story of his stepmother's offering, her commitment to clearing the land, and her final wish to be remembered and celebrated. His voice quivered with emotion as he spoke, each word a heartfelt tribute to the woman who raised him. He couldn't help but admire her unwavering power, even in the toughest of times. As the last words echoed through the clearing, Lou reached for a torch and ignited its tip with a steady hand. The flames danced to life, casting an orange glow on the faces of those gathered around the fire pit. With reverence, each person approached the fire and placed their offerings. Plump berries, fresh bread loaves and bundles of herbs at its base. The aroma of the harvest filled the air and a sense of gratitude and reverence settled over the group as they watched the fire grow brighter and stronger with each new tribute. After completing the final rituals, Lou stood tall and raised his arms in celebration. The crowd joined in with a deafening cheer that echoed through the land. Excitement filled the air as participants eagerly lined up for the first events of the Lunasa Games. 
Despite their old grievances and disputes, they shared a common purpose, to respect Taltu's memory through competition and determination. Kian stood tall and proud among the sea of competitors, his heart racing with anticipation and resolve. He took a moment to scan the faces of his rivals, each one brimming with confidence and determination, ready to pour their whole being into the games. Kian could feel his muscles tensing and his breath quickening as he mentally prepared himself for what was to come. With a deep breath, he knew he was ready to give his all on this historic day. As Kian stepped up to the spear throwing line, he could feel the weight of his father's crafted spear balanced perfectly in his hand. The crowd fell silent, their anticipation filling the air. Kean's heart pounded, a rhythmic drumbeat in his ears. He took a deep breath visualising the target. A woven reed circle set at a distance. With a calm focus, he drew back his arm and released. The spear soared through the air, its flight an arc of determination and skill. It struck the centre of the target with a resounding thud, eliciting a collective gasp from the crowd, followed by a roar of applause. Pulse rushing in his ears, Kean let his gaze dart through cheering faces until they landed on familiar ones. His father's face shone with pride and his mother's smile was radiant, her eyes brimming with joy. He had done them proud. As the sun began to lower in the sky, casting a warm golden glow over the fertile land, the mood settled. And Lu proposed a challenge of a different kind. We have celebrated our physical prowess, he began, his voice carrying over the attentive crowd. Now let us recognise the power of our words, the stories that bind us and the wisdom they carry. One by one, storytellers stepped forward to share their tales. When it was Kean's turn, he felt a flutter of nerves, but was determined to share an old story he remembered from his childhood. One that had been passed down through generations before him. He took a deep breath and began. Long ago, in a time when the world was young and the land was wild, there lived a mighty goddess named Morrigan, Keen started, his voice steady and clear. The Morrigan was not just a goddess of war. She was a protector of the land, a bringer of prophecy and a guardian of destiny. In the days leading up to a great battle, the Morrigan walked the land, 
her keen eyes taking in the preparations. She spoke to the warriors, giving them strength and foretelling their fates. Keen continued, his eyes shining with the passion of his tale. She promised victory, but warned that it would come at a great cost. The crowd was silent, hanging on his every word. As the armies clashed, the Morrigan appeared on the battlefield in the form of a crow, a harbinger of doom for her enemies. Her cries echoed over the din of combat, striking fear into their hearts. The audience was entranced as Keane's voice filled with the drama of the scene. During the battle, the Morrigan confronted the enemy king. With her magic and might, she unleashed a torrent of power, weakening their warriors. She fought fiercely, ensuring that her people would prevail. As the battle raged on, the Morrigan's presence was felt everywhere. She inspired the warriors, turning the tide in the favour of her people. When the dust settled and the enemies were defeated, she sang a song of victory, blessing the land with peace and prosperity. Keane's voice was rich and deep, carrying the weight and power of his story. It rose and fell, mimicking the ebb and flow of a battle, and his words were punctuated with passion and emotion. As he finished his story, his grandfather's wrinkled face lit up with pride. He gave a slow nod and a small smile, silently conveying that his grandson had done the family name proud with his wit and poetry. As the twilight began to fade, Lou called out for the chariots. It was time to race. Keen stroked his loyal steed's neck, the coarse fur prickling against his palm. His breath steadied once he felt the familiar weight of the reins in his calloused hands. There was an energy in the air that night as the earth beneath their feet prepared to witness a race unlike any other. The course, a winding path through fields and hills, demanded both skill and stamina. As the starting signal echoed, the chariots surged forward, the horses galloping with fierce energy. The wheels kicked up dust, and the sound of pounding hooves filled the air. Keen urged his steed forward, navigating the twists and turns with precision. The wind whipped through his hair and the cheers of the crowd spurred him on. The raw strength of the horse surged through the reins in his hands while the chariot obeyed his subtlest cues. As he neared the final bend, the finish line came into view. Keen and his horse pushed forward with unwavering determination. With a final burst of speed, they surged ahead, the wind whipping past them as they crossed the line in a flurry of dust and triumph. As Keen dismounted his steed, the sound of clapping and cheering filled the air, creating a symphony of celebration. His family rushed towards him, 
their eyes shining with pride and happiness. They engulfed him in a sea of embraces and kisses, tears streaming down their faces as they congratulated him on his victory. Lou stepped forward, his presence alone commanding the attention and respect of all gathered. All eyes turned to him, waiting for his words to fill the air. Today we have recognised the great contribution of Taltu, Lou began, his voice carrying the weight of history and wisdom. Through your efforts and perseverance, her legacy continues to thrive. Lou's face lit up with pride as he spoke to his people. You have shown great skill, determination and agility, he said, his eyes scanning the crowd. Today we stand united in celebration of our land and the harvest it has given us. The air was charged with a triumphant energy as the winners received their prizes. Kian, his chin lifted in pride, felt a wave of respect and gratitude course through him. The first sheaf from the new harvest was given to him, an act that held deep importance. It was his task to give this gift to the old gods, worshipped by his people. The golden grains glinted under the dancing firelight as he carefully placed it on an age-old altar. This was a sacred stone, favoured by Lu himself. With tears in his eyes, Cian whispered a prayer to the ancient gods, thanking them for another bountiful harvest. As the moon cast its peaceful glow over the scene, the scent of savoury meats roasted to perfection and seasoned with fragrant herbs wafted through the air. Along with it came the sweetness of honey and the ripe tanginess of fresh berries, tempting the hungry crowd to the feast. Long tables were laden with roasted boar and venison, barley bread and golden goblets of mead. Keen still flushed from his victories, sat with his family. The warmth of the firelight cast a golden glow over the gathered village. Laughter and conversation flowed freely as stories of the day's events were shared. Children ran about, their cheeks rosy with excitement as they begged for second helpings. Keen savoured each bite of the feast. Musicians played lively tunes and soon people were dancing, throwing their cares to the wind. As the night wore on, memories were woven into the fabric of time and a sacred tradition was born. This ritual would be passed down through generations, ingrained in the very essence of Irish culture for centuries to come. As the tale of Taltu and the inaugural Lunasa games draws to a close, let the echoes of selflessness the value of community, 
and the gratitude for the gifts of the land linger in your mind. May these timeless virtues bring you peace and inspiration as you drift into a restful sleep. Thank you everyone for joining me tonight. May the lessons of Lunasa resonate with you, bringing a sense of peace and fulfillment as you prepare to rest. Have a restful night and sweet dreams. Until next time, sleep well, dream deeply, and wake refreshed. Yee Hawaii. Good night. <laughs>